Hi, everyone. The agenda for today is we'll be seeing basic concepts of network and its architecture. What is a computer networking and what is an OSA model and why it an OSA model is important for us. We'll be learning about multiple network devices and understand the network security risk and also the methods and techniques to mitigate the risk in network perspective. First, we go to the computer network. What typically is a computer network? A network, not only a computer network, it's human network, social networking, everything. The word network, it uh, simply means connecting one or more. It may be one or more computers, one or more devices, one or more routers, one or more monitors, or one or more people. Anything and everything which connects to one or more, those are called networks. In computer networking, we call any computing device which is connected on a network is called a computer network. So the three important factors. The first thing for any device in a network, any connected device or connected equipment is called a node, which is connected. It's a part of a network. I'll give you some history. So initial days there were multiple product vendors as like IBM today. IBM even existed before the normal networking started. So IBM were uh, producing devices like network devices. They may be typical older modem or a printer which can be connected on it. Same wise, for an example, HP also manufactures and delivers and it was used by multiple customers. During the initial stages, what happened was there were no restriction. There were no strict laws or uh, guidelines for manufacturing the network devices. So each company has its own pattern. They designed and developed the architecture. They used a specific method to make it easy for the communication between IBM machine to IBM machines. So initially the machines can be connected only within the manufacturer's end. So it was like HP computer can be connected to only the HP network printer, HP network modem or specific to that. A same wise to IBM or any other computers which are manufactured will be worked only on the particular manufacturer's interface. To overcome when days is passed on and the technology is passed on, specific company is not able to fulfill the need of a particular customer. The feature of particular network printer from HP is more good or it's uh, more required by a person for a end user. But most of his equipments are with IBM. He could not connect the HP printer to his network. This was an issue. The same goes to the if it's a very good IBM machine and the customer uses a HP network obviously could not connect it and it get it work. To fix it, there was a general body created and they were uh, setting up the rules. They created the OSA mode. Nowadays, any device, any network device follows this OSA mode. So later, just to fix it, any device from any manufacturer can be used on any net. So all the networking devices works on the principle of OSA mode. That is, OSA is just open system interconnect. So it from the name itself, we can uh, get it. Openly, any network, any device can be interconnected. And in the slide, internet, it's a connection of network which connects all the computing devices and network devices in it. Typically, in a network, we call multiple network segments in it. Personal area network, that is PA and PAN. PAN network is typically your mobile phone and your uh, smartwatch, or your mobile phone and your Bluetooth headset. So these are uh, connected very closely and it belongs to you and uh, any equipment which you use for your personal environment and it covers a very short uh, range. That's called a personal area network. Not only that Bluetooth keyboard and mice when you connect to a computer it connects virtually but it's also a form of network. We call it as a personal area network. Later we go for the some more broader range. It may be within the building or within the campus or within the premise. Anything between 5 to 50 or 500 meters inside. We call it as a local area network. The local area network, that's a private property or combination of multiple private properties. But they form a single network and a single subnet. The purpose is just an extended coverage of not only your room and just beyond your rooms or just beyond your buildings. Anything which is personal and privately used that is called a local area network LAN and then the evolution of Internet grows up. People need to be connected not only within the cities, not only within the countries. They want to connect throughout the globe. 
later on the expansion of connectivity between computers buildings and everything within a city is called as a man metropolitan i mean area network and later on the wide area network wide area network is typically internet widely we connect to any device on any part of the globe from anywhere we are so as i sit in india i can connect to the remote attendees who are from a multiple part of the location and i can answer simply the answer any of their queries when they just type in on the question box so similarly it's called as a wide area network we call it as wan this image just shows what it is there are multiple laptops and multiple computers behind you can see storage one we call it as a data centers we can typically mention in the form of this symbol and the red bricks the bricks around the globe it usually denotes a firewall and uh, inside the firewall the globe which is internet this representation of this image is simply letting know that these computers and the these laptops the data centers everything are connected to the internet so anyone from anywhere can access the information from these computers or completely take control over the computers let's we move on to open system interconnect how the osa model works it's very basic it's fundamental and it's typically required on all the aspects of networking not only be network security professional even for a basic security network oriented task we need to be understanding and we need to have a much more clear understanding of this osa model so from this slide we understand what is a layered architecture why layers are required in networking open system consists of seven different layers each and every layer does a task for a simple example instead of having a network connectivity we are splitting the loads and process of networking and the process of communication we split the processes into seven pieces each seven modules will be taking care of a, a simpler task task which were broken and they are specifically assigned for it so whenever there is an issue we can easily identify which layer is not working and we can directly go there and troubleshoot it and also by splitting task into seven each layer are specifically trained and specifically tuned and specifically enhanced over the period so the functionality of the particular task is getting more efficient and also when combined and the combination of these seven layers gives a good reliability and the performance on the network what is a layered architecture layered architecture data sequentially moves from one layer to the other and also it's a very good point it moves from one layer to other initial processing done by a first layer the next one moves to the second layer likewise it goes to the third fourth fifth and also as up to the seventh layer when we start from the physical layer application layer would be the seventh layer and likewise when a user interacts with printing system or when a user tries to google from internet explorer the user always works on the application layer similarly like how we learned on the kernel level and the application level layer the same works on the networking as well all the users any user who tries to communicate over network or tries to search on a google try to connect to the go to webinar meeting try to make a internet call anything and everything what a user does that is on the application layer so when we start from the application layer the last layer would be physical layer what does layering mean each such operates on the incoming data in predefined way and passes the data to the next level so each layer is working on operating on how to receive the data and how to process it out how to send it so each layer will receive data process it and send it across to the next layer why does one need layering so layering also helps breaking a single complex task into multiple smaller units and each layer can process on the multiple units and get the tds single networking task done this is the osi reference model as we start from the ground up the physical layer this is actually where the physical devices work you can have the hub or the networking cables where connected to a device anything physically you work on it they are called physical layer next when we move up from the physical layer it takes you to the data link layer and also to the network layer the layer 3 it's important for us in security and also in application layers layer 7 will be targeting on the security on both up to layer 3 and layer 7 layer 3 devices we call it as routers firewalls ids ips these can be connected on the layer 
And on the layer 7, uh, we have the application level firewalls. Those are implemented on the layer 7. So these are the seven layers of OSI model. And as we said, this is not a proprietary system. So it can be used by any device manufacturer and can be used on any network. So any device from any vendor can be connected seamlessly across any type, any setting of your network. So it should work because all the devices follow only this principle. This slide is a pictorial representation of the OSA model. What happens? The guy who uses a blue shirt on the top left, when he tries to communicate something to the guy on the bottom right, who's wearing green t-shirt or green shirt. So over the network, if the blue person tries to send a high message, the high message is passed through the application layer and it moves on to the presentation layer, then to the session layer, the transport, network, data link layer, and the physical layer. So a simple high message needs to pass on through the, all the seven different layers. And again, the layer one and the layer three, it's kind of getting communicated. The layer one is the modem, your hub, your ethernet cables are connected, or even if it's a wireless device, which gets connected to the layer one device of the green one. So the physical layer, the later link layer, network and transport, session layer, presentation layer, and again, the same high message moves on to the seven different layers and reaches the green one. Hi, it reached. What the similarity between the physical layer? A physical layer cannot understand what a application layer says. Even when it's in the reverse order, same wise, a data link layer cannot understand the language of presentation layer. The session layer and application layer only can understand presentation layer. That too, the data is sent by the presentation layer, but not the data received by the presentation layer. And every layer will have a set of predefined instructions, protocols, on how to receive data and how to send data, how to process the received information, how to repack it, how to send it. These are the things. So any data which is origin from user will be originating from the application layer. It should pass the seven layers below. And again, it has to move up from the recipients. The data origination is only from the application layer from any end. For example, if the green person wants to send information, when you send high message, the same hello message will move from left application layer, presentation layer to the physical layer, and it will be passed on to the other person's computer over the physical layer, data link layer, and moves up and it reaches the blue person. Even if it's multiple people, or multiple devices communicating, any number of devices needs to follow the same layer from layer one to layer seven or in the reverse order, layer seven to layer one. What is a physical layer? Physical layer is anything which communicates, which connects the computers or the network devices physically. The purpose of physical layer is just to convert zeros and ones. Actually, computer understood the language zeros and ones. This physical layer will convert zeros and one into voltage. And again, the same voltage, frequency, whatever we call. Anything which computer understands to the physical form or the network form. In this layer, we typically work on the wires, connectors, voltage, data rates, etc. This is the very basic layer which makes the networking happen. You could call the modem, network interface cards, hub, whatever network device we connect on the layer one hub. A switch is a layer two device. Hub is just like a repeater. It connects multiple devices, but it does not have anything specific to work. It's just a connector or a extension cable wherein you use a single plug for receiving multiple power outputs. So hub is also a very basic network device. So it comes on the layer one physical layer. After the physical layer, we go to the data link layer. What actually a data link layer is? Data link layer works on controlling the flow of the data and also to identify if there is any, any errors, if the received message is complete, if the sent message is complete, just to ensure that everything is perfect has the error detection method. And uh, in this place where we call it as data frames, layer three, we deal with packets and layer two, we work with frames. Frames and packets are just a smaller size. I mean, broken down information. If the hello message, which carries around uh, 24 bytes or 16 bytes, for example, the packet breaks the high message into two different packets. 
So every eight bytes have a packet and in this data link layer, it will be further broken down as a smaller segment and it's in the frame relay. The data link layer rack provides reliable data transfer via media, physical address, network topology, flow control and error detection. The networking layer, the third the networking layer which is an area where your networks are diverted. This is the place where exactly the computer device network devices will get to know to which destination we have to move. The layer three is also the router we call a intelligent device which it connects multiple networks and also the firewall which works on uh, layer three. It also an intelligent device wherein it knows which network it goes and which network it comes in because they deal with multiple networks. So this one they provide the addressing system. They provides connectivity and path selection and also routing protocols. It will be happening on the level three network layer. Data layer is furthermore. It will be getting the data broken some more smaller size and it adds some additional information on it to ensure that the data sent and received will have the complete information. It uses the header and trailer information more to send. The transport layer is the highest layer just uh, comes up after the network layer. It also ensures that the communication between end to end communication or uh, broadcast communication, whatever it is, it ensures the reliability of the data. So this is the one which maintain host establishment or network creation or creating a virtual terminal to specific task will be taken care by the transport layer. So it's also major portion because the transport layer network layer data link layer physical layer. These are places where the exact data chunks are getting much more squeezed or much more broken down. So every layer will be breaking things into smaller segments and send it to the next level layer. So the session layer is also an important uh, layer in it. it works on the OSM model number five. For example, I have multiple tabs. The tab one is uh, have a separate connection and the tab two has a separate connection. Each different connections are maintained by this session layer. So when I send an information when I click on this button, obviously it will send a signal to the Edureka server and it will fetch the update. Likewise for sending the information on this particular session and receiving the information back to the same session is maintained by the session layer. For example, when I see that this is a command we use net stat following a space and hyphen and a a means it's all type of connection. The presentation layer. This is the layer where exactly the received data any information which is received so far will be arranged in a sequential manner or arranged in the proper way to provide us the exact picture. For example, the slide which I'm seeing here the letter L will be from a different segment different packet or a different frame. The letter six which is completely different packet and different frame which is received in a different order. So all this information will be coming back to the computer in a very micro or smaller pieces. The presentation layer is the one which collects all the information of the particular session and arranges in a sequential order. So this is uh, receiving the data in uh, any order and arranging in a sequential manner to display it properly to the end user. This works on the presentation layer. So top one application layer which is on the happening on the very top layer where the user can interact. It is like a user interface to the network where user can use the command prompt where I pinged in type. For example, I can use the ping command ping google.com. So these are the interfaces. So I'm using a ICMP traffic and ICMP traffic does not have a port associated with it. It just tries to reach the IP address or the host name. And this is the place where the application works. The WebEx works, the Skype works, Internet Explorer works, the web browser works. Anything and everything is works on the application layer. So this is how the data flows. Application layer allows the user to access the network resource and the presentation layer it translates encrypts and compresses data. Likewise when it in reverse again it decompresses decrypts and decompresses and present the layer. So session layer one which establishes a connection which maintains the sessions and also management of the session. It will be taken care by the session layer transport layer. It again gets the data into chunks which breaks the data down from the session layer and send this across to the network layer in network layer. The data is called as packets and the packet will have the appropriate uh, heading information trailer information 
along with the destination address and also the sender address on data link layer again furthermore the packets get broken down and it will be called as frames and frames likewise he tries to send the data as much small as possible it will get the data to the physical layer where physical layer typically works on only on the zeros and ones and those zeros and ones will be sent across to the network over wire or wireless network this is how the data flows from application level 7 to application level 1 so we need to understand what exactly a data is and what exactly a segment is what a packet is what a frame is and what a bit is what is a bit a bit is a zero or a one this is the only language which a computer and a network device understands. Zero is no charge. Number one is positively charged. When a positive signal comes in, it will reads as number one. And if zero comes in, that's a no. Obviously, there is no signal in it. So these are bits, zeros and ones. Second one is frames. Frame is on layer two, data link layer. It's a bunch of data created by network communication hardware. So the NIC card, NIC card or router interface, which creates a set of information. This is how frame looks like. It's 802.3 frame format. It's 802.11 frame format. The frame format, it will have the MAC address destination to where the information has to go. And also who is the sender and what is the MAC address of the router. Second control, I mean access points, MAC address. And this is where the payload comes in. Payload is the actual information of the sending word. It comes by anywhere between 0 to 2312 bytes. A byte consists of 8 bits. So maximum we can send around 18,496 bits on a single frame. CRC, the cyclic redundancy check, the sequence control, the duration, the frame control. We are sending a single data. I mean the payload, it's a single information. But just to ensure the payload is sending across and received properly, we additionally have these frame control one duration eight. The eight different additional options were added just for this payload to ensure that the data is sent properly and received properly. Likewise, the network packet also will be like this. The Ethernet header inside there will be an IP header, the TCP header and the data. The data is, is the actual payload the original information what we try to send across or try to receive. This is how the information is encapsulated. So the data is encapsulated into the TCP header and the IP header encapsulates the TCP and the Ethernet header encapsulates the IP header. Likewise, it creates a layer by layer. So layer by layer so that the actual content will be sent uh, just to ensure 100% it goes to the original state. Segments, it's also the same way segment the chunk of data from the session layer the data received from the session layer will be in chunks it will be broken down into data streams and usually a segment is a chop manageable data stream and data data is the generic i mean normal term what we often use to describe protocols or information usually from the network layer and up any information which is for the network layer are called as data so this is same as the peer-to-peer -peer communications works Physical layer can understand physical layer. Data link layer can understand data link layer, but the word is frames. The data link layer can only understand, read and understand frames. The network layer, it's for packets and the transport layer, it's for segments. And the top three layer is considered as data. This is OSI model. When we see TCP IP model, these three top layers, the session, presentation and the application layer will be combined as one. And this slide tells you what are the protocols available and what type of devices you can connect to the network. On the application layer, it is usually used for applications where the user tries to connect to the network. The protocols which are used are DNS, domain name system, and NFS, boot P, DHCP, SNMP, TFTP, and HTTP. These are the protocols which works on the application level layer. And the device where we can connect to it is called a gateway. Gateway device are any device which are primarily used for getting communicated to the network. In corporate terms, you might be heard of web application gateway, web email gateway, SMS gateway, password gateway. So gateway is something any device or maybe application or it may be a hardware. Any device. Gateway security is a primary part where application level firewall also comes in the gateway category. 
on the presentation layer it works on the ssl mime secure socket layer that's ssl mime and session layer uses netbios sockets named pipes and rpcs these are the relay protocols or netbios is similar to dns wherein to identify the resource with the name to ip address or to the ip address with the names and all these three layers application presentation and session has the device gateway alone when we come down to the transport layer the data is broken and it coming as a segments or a datagram the protocols used are tcp and udp tcp and udp both are working on the transport level layer tcp is a connection oriented protocol and udp does not udp is mostly used for broadcasting wherein when a user tries to send a data the data still flows it will not care about whether the user received the data or not in this udp protocol broadcasting device or a data transmitter it sends data as zeros and ones continuously without stopping for anything until all the data is sent it will not care about whether the recipient received the data or not purpose of the udp protocol is to just to send or throw the data out and complete finishing the data sending across and it is highly faster it's used for highly faster communication and it is used for communicating to multiple users at the same time likewise when we broadcast some session in the youtube broadcasting facebook live or any live streaming services use this udp kind so the purpose is to just send out the data not to worry about whether the recipient receiving it or not just to send the data across but the tcp it's more reliable and more stateful when a packet is sent to the end user it waits for the acknowledgement whether the recipient received the data or not and after receiving the data the recipient needs to acknowledge that i have received the data and this is the crc data which you sent is matching me you can proceed to the next level so likewise it waits for each and every packet to make it simpler this is a three way handshake when a data is sent from the computer one towards the left left computer is the sender it's syn syn is the message i mean when we capture the packets we can see that message syn it goes here and once the data is received by the recipient syn acknowledged message will be sent back to the original sender and after receiving the acknowledgement from the recipient it again acknowledges back to the recipient this is not like logging into bank logging into bank is different http and https both works using the tcp protocol tcp protocol is usually waits and for the acknowledgement from the end user stating that he received the communication the udp the sender here receives a request from the receiver dear sender kindly send what happens next the sender will continuously send no matter whether the recipient receive or not the information will starts flowing just like video streaming service or audio playing service the data or when you visit a web page when it keeps on loading or sending information the sender will not care about whether the receiver received the subject or not once the request is received by the sender to send it keeps on sending continuously the data will flow out no matter the receiver receiving or not but in this tcp when a sender received the request then a receiver needs to acknowledge that the particular segment is sent is received and please send me the next packet the receiver needs to send to the sender i have received the original packet kindly send me the next packet or if the received package is damaged or not matching the exact crc receiver will send let the sender know the package which i received is not exactly the same could you please resend the packet again if the 10 packets needs to be sent to the receiver the receiver will acknowledge each and every packet the first packet is good second packet is good third packet is good in likewise the fourth packet is missed but end of session the receiver needs to have 10 packets in his hand if he misses fourth packet he'll send i did not receive the packet number 4 please send me the packet number 4 or if the packet number 6 is damaged or it's incomplete the receiver will notify the packets number 6 is incomplete or it's damaged kindly send me the packet number 6 again so all the 10 packets will come to the receiver send he will confirm and verify dear sender i received all the packets as you said and it's matching all the information you said so i can proceed it so the initial 10 packets will be received by the receiver and he can process it and once again the connection is then terminates until the receiver receives 10 packets the connection will be continuous and it will not be terminated once all the data and all the packets are received by the receiver 
the connection gets terminated only after the receiver's acknowledgement so likewise again a new request is raised a new session is established likewise udp and tcp works network layer network layer is giving the addresses addresses for a computer or a network device ip v6 and ip v4 at present we commonly use ip v4 on most of the devices and right now most of the companies are seriously working steering ahead for ip v6 because with ip v4 we can provide ip addresses for only a certain limit of computers so this is how in this command prompt 172.217.116.78 every three characters inside separated by dot are called octets four different octets in an ip address these are separated by a dot this is how it would look like ip v4 address it will be separated by dot and three characters are called octets and these consist of eight bits every octet is consist of eight bits so totally the size of ip address will be 32 bits or you can call it as a 4 byte so 0 to 255 0 to 255 0 to 255 to 0 to 255 This is the range an IP address can be. It starts with zero and ends with two five five, and all the octets zero and ends with two five five. There are multiple classes: the class A address, class B address, class C, class D, and class E. This is how the IP v six address looks like. It will be of total eight octets, and four characters can be in place. Eight pairs of four characters. So it will be starting from a zero to F. the hexadecimal character 0 to f likewise in this picture we can see from 0 to f that is 16 characters and also the equivalent binary value 0 is 0 1 is 1 1 0 gives the value of 2 1 1 gives the value of 3 1 0 0 gives the value of 4 so likewise 0 to 16 we can get it derived i mean 0 to 15 total 16 values we can derive in the ipv6 table we can use the 0 to 8 octets when in comparison to ipv4 we can provide only the binary characters 0 to 255 but ipv6 has hexadecimal characters as well it uses 0 to f and also it has four different pairs likewise as you see the length and also the size of the characters between ipv4 and ipv6 ipv6 can provide more addresses then the ipv4 right now we not only have the ip addresses for uh, computers or for the networking devices recently there were a high trend in getting networkly connected devices multiple devices we call the internet for things you can connect your refrigerator or you can connect your wifi modem your air conditioner washing machine everything so each and every device needs to be provided with an address with ipv4 we cannot provide lot of public addresses due to the scarcity we almost migrating to ipv6 wherein we it can be obtain multiple addresses so on the data link layer what we deal with on the data link layer we dealing with frames frames also a smaller segment of datagram or a packet and the protocol used on it were ethernet ieee 802 llc ieee 802 so the term ieee you should be hearing more on the computer field ieee is a standards organization they were the people who design or who approve the connectivity methods they are the one who designed the usb cable types and the usb sockets the fire wire thunderbolt cable thunderbolt cable so this is the institute of electrical and electronics engineering they are the people or they are the body who prove and develop technologies for communication for the security as we see that nist we see the nist nist frameworks the nist technologies i mean nist procedure and features the ieee is exactly the same but they work much on the technology and engineering and communication part they design and they approve they permit the wifi the next generation 4g 5g any networking or any technology oriented it comes only through ieee the physical layer transmits the zeros and ones we deal with the bits on here and also the protocol is used is ieee 802.2 or isdn the devices which we connect is a repeater or a multiplexer or hub what is a repeater repeater is nothing but a extender or a signal extender or it usually signal extender hubs also does the same thing the hubs will not have the mac address 
a MAC address is actually what we call as a burnt in address. An address cannot be changed. Computers and other devices, we can have multiple addresses. One is a static IP address or a dynamic IP address. Static IP address, which is permanent and it will not change when you reboot your computer and when you restart your computer or when you're not using a computer for almost 10, 15 days or a month or even a year, your IP assigned to your computer will be static and it will not be changed anytime. Not only for a computer, it can be also for a network device. Static is permanent. Dynamic, we can change. Or whenever a reboot happens or whenever we need to switch a account, we can change the IP address. You can get a new address. So the physical address, the MAC address, which is created while manufacturing the device and it hardware built. I mean, there are multiple capacitors which will be burned down when manufacturing. This is how the MAC address looks like. 3A, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, 2, 6, C4, 6, 9. This is how the MAC address looks like and these MAC addresses are embedded on the network device. This is a network interface card where you can see the MAC address is printed, but actually it is not like a printed one. It will be like a burnt in address. They will be burning down few sockets just to make sure the particular value will not change as they make the IP address hardware level. It is not on a software level. So the physical address will not change and this is how it's an example of your network interface card looks like this seems to be like an older card. The newer card will have multiple sockets or a single network interface card have multiple Ethernet ports or nowadays it's more advanced. This is typically how a network interface card and the Mac address looks like the demo one. So demo one what are we doing is uh, we going to download a packet sniffer. Packet sniffer is nothing but capturing the data on layer 3. It grasps the data which sent to the network or received over the network. So this is the time we need to download trial software on the computer and we need to go for a demo session. So once I fill in the form, it asks me to verify the email address. Once we fill in the form, we'll receive an address. I'm copying the link from my address and entering it here. When we fill in the form, we'll be receiving an email with the download link. So it will take you to the download instructions page. It's valid for 30 days and this is the serial number. You can click on the download trial, save the file. File size is around 300 MB. I'm running the file which is downloaded. Next. So it requires an internet connection. It is not accepting email. Instead, you can use the link which I gave. So when you click on the link, it will also give you the serial number which is a 30 day serial number you can use. It's automatic when you click on automatic and click on next. Here I need to put in my serial number and proceed all the information. So there is a one more wonderful tool. Wireshark is a wonderful tool for packet capturing. It's a 100% free tool open source. And what I would suggest is you could also go to the virtual box site. So when we have a computer, we can install multiple guest operating system using virtual box. This is the place where you need to go. You have to download virtual box. I'm using a Windows host. So I click on the Windows operating system. It will download a setup file which is around 109 MB. I'm also downloading the virtual box setup extensions. So right now I'm downloading a tool which is called virtual box image for Kali Linux. Linux operating system which is dedicated this is used by all the offensive security professionals who work on testing application security network vulnerability. It comes with multiple built in tools. Tools will help us to get fixing the bugs or fixing the vulnerabilities. So after downloading the virtual box, we need to go to the location here. It's offensive security dot com to download Kali Linux and select the Linux virtual box image, not the VMware image. We are using virtual box, which is free from Oracle and we can run multiple operating system on it. So I'm downloading the 64 bit and this is the link for 60 bit 4 bit operating system save file. I don't need to download a Wireshark on the same one because as it comes along with Kali Linux use this link for downloading. I'm running it click on install. Yes, so the installation is running asking for a serial number. This is the serial number. The other two applications, which is an Oracle virtual box and uh, the Kali Linux image does not require serial number. It's 100% free. The next thing what we do is we can just double click on the Kali Linux image, which we downloaded from offensive security. Let me go back. In the meantime, we come back to the Omni peak. 
I click on the new capture, click on all the adapters. So I'm clicking on the start capture. So it will it should be capturing all the information. If I type in Google or something, google.com packet capture test. Look, there were some traffics identified. It also capturing my RDP. RDP is nothing but remote desktop protocol where I used to connect to the server. Server which I'm working on is I got connected from my laptop and it's hosted on a cloud environment. There were a traffic identified which is on google.com. So totally around 3,12,900 bytes captured on this session. So it's still monitoring the network activity. Let me give you an example what a streaming would be. Let's play Aladdin. Aladdin is playing in the background. The Omni Swipper is already started capturing. Do you see the Google.video? It's raising. The network is speaking here. So let me stop capturing it. These are the HTTPS traffics. Let me go close. On the total traffic, the top protocols used it's for HTTPS 68.5% of my traffic originated and received on my computer. It's HTTPS almost close to 70% it's used and the remaining 30% it's used by the remote desktop protocol which used to connect my laptop to the remote server on the left. There were the high percentage of data used by youtube.com which is on 34% Google has on 10% the others as well. So application wise we captured YouTube 63 percent RDP 10 percent Google video other 4 percent the streaming media. It's around 67 percent toward the left. There is no voice and video call the no compass. We see the packets here. This is how the packet looks like we captured an RDP packet. This is how it's the packet info the number of flags the status the length of the packet and the timestamp when it's sent. As we seen on the previous picture image on how the packet looks like we do you see the destination. This is a MAC address. This is also a MAC address protocol IPv4 IPv4 header also has information on it header length. So the identify the fragment ratio. So this is how the packet looks like the packet information packet head and this is what actually streamed across 42010A. This was the information goes through the network. This is how you see when you capture a packet. So when we go on a packet, so why don't we see the YouTube video? This is the Google video application. We captured something. We captured it from the Google video. Again, it shows the hexadecimal alphanumeric characters. This is of obviously no sense when we capture it, but that to an encrypted traffic, we would not be able to identify what exactly sent across the network and what that is. For simpler, let me start capturing one more thing with the HTTP. I mean uh, HTTP without encryption. Let me find a site because nowadays all the sites are becoming HTTPS traffic oriented. Save changes. Yes, this is my capture one. Resuming a capture two. Let me open up uh, Wikipedia. That's also should be HTTPS. HTTP website. BBC is that HTTP? BBC seems to be HTTP, but not sure whether it would work. Let us capture again. That's a boxing happening. We have a HTTP traffic here, so let's stop HTTP traffic captured packets. We need to scroll down and identify its filter HTTP. Now we see the HTTP traffic. We filtered out other traffics so we can see only the HTTP traffic. So when compared to the older string, we can now read at least on the towards the right. You can see unencrypted text. Do you see my mouse pointers? We can read text access control access control origin. This was the web page goes here when we read something. This is the character step header information allow access control. So when compared to the previous HTTPS traffic HTTP traffic can be read. It can be easily decoded and we can identify what goes and what comes in in the packet format. This is a simple example how we captured the network traffic and we intercepted TCP IP. The only difference is the top four layers will be converted as a single one. This is the regular TCP IP model. The network layer, the data link layer and the physical layer both are combined network access network layer data link layer and the physical layer are single the network access layer. And the OSI model network layer will be called as an internet layer and transport layer will be host to host and the top three layers of application presentation and the session. 
these three will be combined and will be called as a process layer or as an application layer. This is the difference between TCP IP and the regular OSA mapping. So simple uh, TCP IP stack. What are the protocols used? Top four layers. The application layer uses FTP, SMTP, Telnet, HTTP, etc. And the internet layer uses host to host layer uses TCP, UDP protocols. And the internet layer uses IP, ARP, ICMP. And the network layer, network interface. These are the simple examples. What is an FTP? FTP is simply a file transfer protocol. It helps us transfer file between share a file from a server or to store some files on the server. Telnet is a remote logging protocol. It helps us to log into a computer remotely. SMTP is a simple mail transfer protocol which helps us to send emails. HTTP is hypertext markup language, HTML, and it uses HTTP protocol, hypertext transfer protocol for the internet purpose browsing websites. Any website you see on the browser is created using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, the backend uh, scripting like PHP, ASP.NET, JSPs, anything. But the foundation for building up a web page, it's HTML. So it also uses the HTTP protocol. So these are the difference between TCP and UDP protocol. It's a stateless. So where we use it, UDP is usually not meant for reliable. It's not meant for reliable communication. It is used for real time application such as VoIP, online streaming, etc. It is most used for unidirectional. It's for one way directional once from a receiver to the senders. That is how it works. It will not work from the two way handshake or two way communication. It's single way transaction. Wherein the TCP, it's more reliable and more connection oriented and data sent across the network or received across the network will be reliable. The difference between IPs V4 and V6, we already seen that. IPv4 is a 32 bit address, wherein the IPv6 uses a 128 bit addressing scheme. Approximately number of address available on IPv4, that seems to be almost close to 49,67,296, almost 420 crores. Even though the amount is vast, but we cannot use it on multiple computers, it is not sufficient enough to assign it to all the clients. Likewise, we got into the other address IPv6, it's 128-bit addressing, so it's approximately 2 power 128. The IPv4 address is just uh, 2 power 32, but in IPv6, it gives 2 power 128, so it's too large. We get multiple addresses, billions of address we can use. The ARP we use this address resolution protocol. It's one of the protocol used to identify the network devices and to get registered on one of the network. BJP is border gateway protocol. It's simply a routing protocol between the networks. It's for BJP. It's highly used. Let's go for one more demo on IP Watcher. Downloading the IP Watcher 3 and running it. I'm going with the trial evaluation edition. IP Watcher is a freeware, supports 2000 XP. In this case, my operating system is 2012, so I need to run it on a compatibility mode. Go to properties, compatibility. Instead of running compatibility, you can select Windows Vista or Windows XP. Let me try running as Windows XP. No, it's not working on my computer. This is just to test the IP. For testing of the IP, we can also use the command prompt, NSLOOKUP, to identify whose IP is this. We call google.com. We'll get the IP address here. This is the IPv6 address and this is the IPv4 address. So likewise, we can also go for yahoo.com. It will give you the IPv6 and IPv4 addresses as well. I'll try to reverse it up 172.217.166.78. This is the IP address we got from google.com. I'll give this address here. This is the place where it's hosted 72.30.35.9. When we reverse it up, this takes to the host name of the YAG server. So likewise, we simply use command line tools. We use ARP, the same address resolution protocol 72.30.35.9. So when we run uh, our address resolution protocol, it will give us the locally available interface, locally available networks, IP address, etc. Likewise, the command prompt which comes with Windows operating system has multiple utilities. Utilities that can be used effectively. So instead of going for a freeware or downloading additional softwares, there is various tools which can be used in command prompt and from Windows 10, I mean the server operating system and others has PowerShell, which is more powerful than command prompt. 
which got multiple utilities and multiple functions. We can use scripting. We can uh, program and we can write a script to automate things. More advanced and more complex tasks can be easily achieved using PowerShell. So I'll type power. The regular PowerShell would be like similarly. This it is similar to a command prompt, but it's more powerful. But for creating the scripting language or creating some automated task, you will get the panel here where you can get the syntax. It's similar to the syntax. You can use the assistance from it. These are the list of commands here available. Get instance or add history. So easily you can create the command you can use the PowerShell here import module. So when we are getting the modules imported the storage or history option. So likewise, we run some command PowerShell network script. So when you get into the internet, you can see multiple scripts here. Let's copy and try running it here. This is an example. It just calls the get services and running services on the system and it displays. So most of complicated tasks on the computers can be automated and uh, it's easily achieved just by running a single line or multiple lines of scripts. So no need for us to go beyond. So again the data encapsulation data encapsulation what we see on the picture one layer is encapsulated with other information data encapsulation I show you as in picture data encapsulation image what we see on the application layer does the image this is how much I can expand maximize this is the data on data layer you see the data when it comes to the transport layer it uses the protocol UDP and the data and encapsulated with the UDP header data becomes of UDP data along with the UDP header and the same amount goes into the network layer as a IP data with the IP header. This is called encapsulation. Every layer the data passes through it adds additional header and uh, trailer information along with the additional information added on the previous layer. It comes to the next layer. So on the IP layer it also adds a IP header field along with the regular data and goes to the frame layer. In the frame layer what happens the frame header is added to it and also the frame trailer added to it. Typically when we see two fourth of the data is the original data. The remaining data are created while it passes through multiple layers. This is called data encapsulation. So these are the common devices what we see on network. What we see as a repeater repeater is simply an amplifying device. What is the difference between a bridge and a repeater bridge also does the same thing. It is a pass through device. Any network can pass through it just amplifies it and retransmit the same signal. But the only difference is repeater does not have a MAC address, but a bridge does the repeater and the hub and router gateway switches and most of the security networks are missing in the slide. The firewall IPS IDS IPS is intrusion detection system IPS is intervention system. These are all missing on the slides, but it's good for us to know them better. Repeater works on the physical layer. Repeater is just uh, amplifies the signal and sends the distance to a longer length and hub data link layer. The difference between the repeater and the hub is repeater amplifies only the particular signal wherein hub gets signal from multiple inputs and send it to a single output or multiple output or receive from multiple input and transmit across multiple output. Different types of hubs are active hub and a passive hub. The active hub is uh, typically just to clean up the network disturbance or network noise and also to enhance the signal strength across the network. So the passive hub is simply a pass on the device. It just transmits the signal whatever it gets. It will not make any modification or uh, error fixing or denoisification etc. Bridge is similar to the repeater and has the ability to filter and require content based on the MAC address router. It's a very important thing. It works on the layer three and it is an intelligent device wherein it can uh, make communication between two different networks. The switches hubs the repeaters. This works on a single network single subnet. It cannot communicate between networks, but the router it's an intelligent one. It can communicate between multiple networks and also can route traffic between multiple networks. The session layer works from network layer till uh, seven application layer. It actually maintains sessions of uh, every individual connection. Every single connection has a session that was managed by the session layer presentation. The switch also works on the data link layer network protocols and security viewpoint. What is a set of instruction a protocol a protocol is nothing but a set of instruction on how to move data between a device to a device. 
So OSA model is the fundamental which makes any device from any vendor can communicate and connect to the other network. Typically it uses a headers and trailers so that it be easy for the data to be sent from one layer to other layer and to move across. The ARP is address resolution protocol. So in attacker's perspective, we can see how an ARP can be manipulated. ARP packets will be sent across multiple devices, not only network devices and also from computers. So our request is sent from computer one at the hub to the computer two. In between there is a switch. The also we can see a person who's uh, monitoring the traffic between the switch and the other computers. What happens when um, attacker manipulates the traffic and uh, manipulates and producing a different address and different cloning of IP address or Mac table. That's also called as an or poisoning. As per the attackers view there are four different things that taken care of. one is submitting local segment. Previously what we dealt with the personal area network local area network and uh, wide area network etc. Subnetting is a, even a smaller fragment of any of these network pan LAN, WAN, any etc. And the attacker also can obtain the encryption information. So how the encryption works and how it's got when the ARP was poisoned even the uh, intrusion detection system can be bypassed and that's obviously a security breach. DHCP is simply a dynamic host configuration protocol. Previously, we were discussing on what is a static IP address and a dynamic IP address. In a environment of more than hundreds or thousands of computers, it is obviously hard for an individual to go to each and every computer and to assign an IP address. So just to overcome DHCP services enabled, what actually it does, it provides a IP address to one of your computers. It can be uh, configured to set particular computer with a static IP address or with a dynamic IP address. DHCP service is usually for managing and maintaining your IP addresses. In operating system like Windows 2012, we can find the DHCP server here. So I don't have the DHCP configured here. For it, what I'll be doing is I'll be adding in the server manager. I'll go there, a role based feature on the same here. So I'll be promoting as a DHCP server. So when I click on here and next, we can also add additional features which are to be enabled. Let me can try install the tenant client. So as of now, DHCP is enough for me. So I'll, when I click on next, it will ask whether I need to proceed and confirmation when I install the DHCP server will be installed on this computer. The only thing I need to install and reboot the computer. So DHCP comes along with any server operating system or we can also download free DHCP servers. If you're using regular operating system like Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8, we can uh, go to the source forge and use open DHCP. Open DHCP is a free application where you can run it on your Windows operating system. It can take care of fastening the IP DHCP task. So what are the DHCP point of view an attacker looks in? Attacker also spoof into the network. Once he gets the access to the default gateway, he can obviously spoof into the any traffic comes in and going forward. He can manipulate the man in the middle attack or denial of access service. For example, I'll again go with the command prompt. We can take google.com as our DHCP server. What I'll be doing is I'll use the switch hyphen T, which means it will be continuously pinging. So if I did not use the T, it will ping the host for four times and it gives the result. But instead, I'll be using an hyphen T to ping the host address continuously repeatedly. It means that it will be sending a traffic or sending a request directly to a DHCP server. Likewise, I can open a one more instance, duplicate instance of it. Come on. Again, I'll use a ping and google.com makes hyphen T. There are two different computers. For example, these are two different computers running a denial of service attack. So what happens when we use one more thing, google.com hyphen T? It means that three different computers are trying to send requests continuously on a DHCP server, which means the DHCP server will be on load. It needs to be processing all the input requests. When a hacker is into a network, obviously he will not work with a single computer. He'll be having a hundreds and hundreds of computers, which are bots. Bot network is typically which is an infected computer, which would be controlled by a hacker. When hundreds of computer tries to perform a ping test or a request to a DHCP server, obviously the DHCP server will not be working fine and it will be down for some time. In the meantime, DHCP cloning attack, attacker can be gaining access or he might temporarily be a DHCP host as we shown here. 
when he has a compromised computer installed with the dhcp host and uh, configured it to a dhcp with the dhcp server he can also run a domain name server so he can uh, positioning up dns which makes any computer from your corporate network to redirect to your wrong traffic for example when a user tries to type in google.com it should not go to yahoo.com it should obviously go to google but a hacker can manipulate the traffic and redirect and take it to your competitor site why bitcoin.com you should go for bitcoin.com it should not go to the any other ruble or cryptocurrency other coins obviously so the traffic manipulation and the dns poisoning and r poisoning these are so crucial in the network level security icmp what we did we just pinged ping is icmp internet control message protocol it does not use as a proxy it just tries to reach the ip address the same icmp based on the icmp we use the smurf attack we use multiple packets we can customize the icmp packet and send it across to a particular destination every layer every packet sent to the layer would be understood only as content only when if the format is valid if the wrong format or malformed request comes in particular layer will not be understanding it and it will not know how to avoid or how to process the things obviously when we flood hundreds and thousands of packets with the malformed data usually the network device or network service will go confused and it will make a temporary network inavailability so these are the ways we can modify the packet malform the data or malform the strings or malform the content and send it as a icmp the one of the common way it's a malicious script browser based attack a script will be injected to any of the trusted website and the infected script will make the website behave malicious or it can divert to a different system or something denial of service distributed denial of service these are things which making the service is not available for a certain time usually the hijacked website or script manipulated website or dome based manipulation which are done just for the personal gain of the hacker they obviously use email campaign where we'll be receiving a genuine email when we click on a something a particular link it will take us to a malicious or infected site it will get advertisements which is not specific for us also it will uh, take us to get the malware or malicious software download into the computer ransomware campaigns like wanna cry petya etc the crypto lockers uh, these were used campaign the malware campaign done through phishing emails or uh, on the fly downloaders or traffic manipulated we intended to visit the right website but it was uh, diverted to a wrong website and getting the malware downloaded and getting ourselves in trouble so those were happening uh, in the previous past so make sure that you not uh, clicking on any of the phishing mails if you suspect the mail is not from a trusted one simply delete it and don't explore the email links and try to get yourself infected I always have a good uh, antivirus running and keep the definition of signatures the software upgrade of the antivirus up to date in my computer i do not use a uh, antivirus because most of the time i use some specific tools which would be the security auditing tools which similarly simulate infection malware so those tools will be blocked by antivirus and i would not be able to work so that's why the reason i will not use antivirus on my computer and also what i do is if anything goes wrong i'll right away go and reset the pc i'll wipe out the data and reinstall i will not have important stuffs on it it is just for a testing pc i have and other three common one is cross site scripting cross site scripting is inserting the infection or inserting the script or any piece of online application online uh, website and making your custom script work for you and the sql injection sql injection is identifying the values or schemas of the table you use mostly people use sql no sql based database for creating your uh, web page any large uh, web page which is maintained by a cms or uh, database oriented most of the web programming language support sqls so using the sql not only the vulnerabilities when you are so experienced in sql queries a string customize writing a string and send it across usually on the address bar you can see the tab this is the url and following which there is a query string which starts with an a question mark and i use the tab equal to course content and other batch id equal to 1820 so usually with the string i can manipulate i can custom create a url and send it to it so path traversal is also simply uh, navigating into the sites 
just like moving into their web directory or local directory. So physically triggered attack some rogue devices. What happens when person comes and connect a device on your local network? That can be any device a router switch a computer device or even a network sniffing device which got connected to your network physically and it also becomes a part of your network. The scanning network the port scanning vulnerability scanning the same picture explain the same. There is a hacker who inserts his hand and gets access to the local computer it's list of ports open the vulnerability scanning vulnerability scanning is a uh, scanning your computer for existing vulnerabilities or known vulnerabilities. You come to know that these are the existing vulnerabilities available. For example, we go for a Nessus scanner. Nessus is a freely available tool. It's a vulnerability scanner. You can also use a trial version of it. Nessus scanner like we see map and NCAT. These are uh, very important tools. I'm giving an 8 gigabyte of RAM for the virtual machine and I'm also increasing the processor. Once we got into the Kali Linux box, we can see some um, additional stuffs. I mean, how to use Nmap, how do we use Metasploit for scanning the vulnerabilities? APT, APTs are advanced persistent threats. Advanced persistent threat are more complex. Or they were like a masterpiece of virus. If a virus or a Trojan or a worm, it's like a high school kid. The APT levels are like they are a doctorate level programs. Just to identify the presence of the infection, it takes time. So before we identify, it comes in, it does the, all the tasks and activities it intended to, and it also keeps itself deleted or it keeps it traces. Thank you.